Why? Let's get started. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Mukim. So this is lecture three. So today we will continue. We will continue the uh, sun presentation in wood detection part. Um, we have three. Three. Right. Okay. Three. Uh, paper presentation left. Um. Yeah, so first of all, uh, okay, so the first paper was uh, scale aware trident network for the object detection by Eugene. So today we will start with this paper. If you, Eugene, if you prepare, please start. So, hello, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, let me start. Hello, I'm Eugene Gang from Data Intelligence Lab. I'd like to present the paper Scale Aware Trident Network for Object Detection. Object Detection Network has performed well for medium objects, but not for small objects and two large objects. However, detecting and tagging them are also needed to understand the scene carefully. So the problem statement on this paper is how to generate scale specific feature maps with a uniform representation power. <laughs> there are two structures before this paper with the same motivation that models should have different receptive fields for objects with different scales. One is multi-scale image pyramid and the other is multi-layer feature pyramid as Professor covered last time. They have critical drawbacks as a long inference time and requiring different parameter for different scale objects respectively. In this work, the authors aim to get the best of two structures without their drawbacks. Trident not achieves the goal using different receptive fields via dilated convolution with weight sharing. Here is the investigation of receptive field of trident nut. They use three branches with different dilation rate, PS. In, sorry, in first branch, PS is one, and this is the filter of this branch, for example, three by three convolution. Uh, in the second branch, this PS is two, and in dilation convolution, there are DS minus one zeros between the values. In third branch, the S is three, and this is the filter for it. Therefore, the size of the receptive fields are all different for each branches. Now let's see the structure. From ResNet backbone, they replace the last block with Trident block. This is the enlarged Trident block. In Trident block, each branches share the same width. But since they have different receptive fields, Different regions of interest ROIs are considered for scale aware training in each branches. So the branches are driven to detect a small object, medium object, and a large object, respectively. These three are the main points in this work three branches, same weights, and scale aware training. Here are the results of ovulation study on Coco Mini Validation Set. They consider the two models as a backbone. When multi branch is adopted, uh, the scores increase, especially for large objects, the gap is the highest. When scale aware training scheme is adopted, the performance for large objects decrease, but for small objects increase. The authors conjecture that the scale aware training may bring the overfitting problem. When weight sharing is adopted, the score increases. So the author analyzes it as weight sharing elevates the overfitting problem from scale aware training. The author study the performance of each branch and show that the second branch is the candidate of major branch. Also, as you can see, uh, the different size of receptive field affects the detection of different size of objects. With this result, the authors propose Trident to not fast only for inference with second branch. 
When they turn off the scale of air training, the result is approximated to the original result. This is because of weight sharing between the branches. Finally, here is the result compared with SOTA models. Trident now achieves the SOTA result with COCO benchmark, and they adopt the image pyramid for testing and get further improvement. Let me show their contribution and conclusion. They are the first to show the effects of receptive field in scale variation. They propose an object detection method, Trident network, with multi branch and scale aware training. And they propose Trident not fast for fast inference and show SOTA result on Coco benchmark. The crucial conclusion is that Trident not could generate scale specific feature maps with the uniform representation power. Thank you for listening. Hey, thank you very much. Um, any question from the student? No? Okay. Thank you very much for a uh, good presentation. Thank you. Yeah, so, 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 한국말로 할게요. 여기 한국인들이니까 대부분 태권 학생, 민섭 학생, 용화 학생, 어, 학부 학생 필요 없고 영은 학생, 희지 학생, 준영 학생, 서우 학생. 혹시 같은 연구실 있는 친구들이 얘기해주고 친구들 안 받고 친구들은 오늘 결석으로 처리하겠습니다. 자, 오케이. 한 마디만 더 잔소리를 하면은 그 여러분들 사실 어, 대부분 한국인들이 한국말 잔소리를 하면은. 재수 만드는 건 괜찮아요. 재수 만드는 건 괜찮고 뭐 여러분들 뭐 당연히 바쁠 테니까 따라 얘기 많이 테니까. 근데 최소한 다른 친구들이 준비해 온 학생 발표하는 건 여러분 들었으면 좋겠어요. 그렇죠? 여러분도 발표를 할 거고 나중에. 그렇죠? 발표를 해야 되고 또뭐 여러분들 옆에 있는 친구가 발표하는데 그렇죠? 듣지도 않고 있고 출석 체크도 이름도 안 받고 있는 거 아마 켜 놓고 바로 끈거 같은데 최소한 그러지 말았으면 좋겠어요. 여러 번 얘기했습니다. 이제부터 바로 안 바꾸는 친구들은 다 네, 처리하겠습니다. 자, 더 오케이. Okay, there was a one question. If I understand correctly, we sharing between the various skills and that help people solve your problem. Okay, so Eugene, please answer this question. Uh, actually, overfitting problem is occurred by not weight sharing, but uh, skill aware training, and in the result. Uh, uh, all of the skills, multi-branch weight sharing and scale aware training scheme are adopted together. Uh, it has the best result. So the weight sharing can elevate the overfitting problem, and uh, they have the synergy. They have the synergy in the result uh, when they adopt it together. Weight sharing in scale aware uh, training. Thank you. 정확한 답변인 것 같아. 제가 또 추가는 안 할게요. 네. 오케이. Thank you very much. And let's move to the next uh, presentation. Next presentation is going to be the paper with the code review. The title of the paper was You only look at one sequence, the lead thinking transformer in vision through the object detection. I, Jungun. Okay. Please start. Hello. Do you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Jung Park from Robot Intelligence Lab. Today I'm going to talk about a paper called the YOLO F. Sure, for you only look at one sequence. As you all know, DIT is designed to model long range dependencies and global texture information instead of local and region level relations. Due to this property, DIT lacks hierarchical architectures as modern CNN like FPN to handle the large variation in the scale of visual entities. So the main question is that this people want to answer is, can pure VIT transfer pre-trained general representation from image level recognition to 2D object detection task? And of course, the answer is, yes, it can. So the main contribution for this paper are threefold. First, the other showed that pre-trained 
from pre-training on ImageNet 1K, vanilla VIT can successfully be transferred to perform object detection task. And they also show that 2D object detection can be accomplished in a pure sequence-to-sequence -sequence manner. Finally, YOLO S can be also used as a benchmark to evaluate pre-training strategies for VIT. Please note that the contribution is not about achieving state-of-art perform performance in object detection task, but whether to show the transferability of VIT. The architecture is really simple. They simply drop CLS, CLS token for image classification and append 10 randomly initialized learnable detection tokens called DT. Given patches of input image, they first map X patch to D dimension token with linear projection. Then given patch token and detection token, the VOD D is same as VIT. After token is encoded by transformer encoder, the detection token goes through multi-layer perception head where it predicts class and boxes. So same as B tier, the optimal bipartite matching is, is, is handled. And the optimal bipartite matching between prediction and generated by DT tokens and ground truth object is done. Since the model is unaware of 2D structure, YOLOS can perform any dimensional object detection without knowing the explicit special structure and geometry. And for positional embedding, they perform 2D interpolation due to the property that images from detection data set are much larger than images from classification task. What author emphasizes is that YOLOS is designed for minimal additional inductive bias injection, like there is no degeneration like well, three by three or one by one convolution and no feature, feature pyramid and no region-based pooling. So the comparison with DTR is as follows. DTR uses transformer encoder and decoder together, but YOLOS uses encoder only. Also, DTR is pre-trained on CNN backbone, but YOLO S is pre-trained on VIT. And finally, DTR performs cross attention between encoded image features and object queries with auxiliary decoding loss, but YOLO S uses only one sequence on encoder. And I think this is the reason for the title. They conducted experiments on various backbone settings. They use DEIT tiny, small, and base. DEIT is a model pre-trained based on knowledge distillation method with distillation token appended. So from model scaling perspective, they made two more settings on small model. First one is called the uniform compound scaling, where the scaling is done uniform with respect to flops among all dimensions. So the embedded dimension layers and trainer resolution are different. And the next one is fast scaling where it primarily scale model with width and while depth and resolution are lesser. All of the experiments is conducted on Coco data set. The results show that image at 1K pre-training results cannot precisely reflect performance on detection. Comparing between other pre-training methods like MoCo and Dino, which they say that the detection performance is sensitive to pre-training method. And for different scale model, it implies that the performance is in consistence between pre-training and transfer learning. Deriving from this result, they claim that YOLOS can be a benchmark to evaluate pre-training schemes. Uh, so with comparison to SOTA detection model, they say that the performance is comparable with SOTA model. As a result, the paper sh showed the transferability of VIT. And they can say that with minimal modification on Canon called VIT, architecture can be successfully transferred to object detection test. And what I found interesting was for detection token, the paper found out that they are sensitive to object lo locations and size, 
while it is insensitive to object categories. They calculated the correlation between cosine similarity of DT tokens and both on L2 distance of bounding box center and cosine similarity of, of feature on the classifier. The correlation co coefficient is near zero between classes and DT token, which implies there is no correlation, while correlation coefficient is minus 0 0.8 between boxes and DT tokens, which means that DT token is more correlated to boxes. And they also said detect detaching tokens has minor impact on AP than vulnerable tokens. And for implementation detail, they use two types of positional encoding interpolation. Type one is used on small and base BIT model where positional encoding is interpolated following BIT. The size is usually smaller than the input sequence size. And the positional encoding is on middle layer two. Type two is used on tiny model where positional encoding slight is slightly larger than input size and no positional en embedding is on mid layer. And the paper also showed self attention map on de detection tokens, which are not that perfect, but it seems to attend to object they that they want to detect. And this is all I prepared for this presentation. And thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much. I had uh, two questions. So yeah, I wrote on the chatting room. Please answer that. So the first question is what was the main ingredient of D tier to outperform yellow X. I think that D tier uses CNN backbone with the and CNN backbone to extract the feature and to and transformer to transformer encoder and decoder to predict the detection. And I think that using CNN backbone can extract some uh, better feature than using only VIT backbone mm -hmm. because uh -huh, CNN is used, is known to get inductive bias. Okay. So you mean to, to, to the convolutional inductive bias from the DTR, right? So oh, yeah. from the backbone, CNN backbone, right? Okay, yeah. so next question was how the pre-train was done in, in, in your loss? Oh, you mean this D, D, E, I, T model? Ah, I see, I see. So, so you mean, okay, so we can use the pre-train, the ah, vision, uh, VIT, pre-train the VIT model okay. and fine-tune for the object detection, right? Yes, right. Ah, okay, okay, clear. And the sketch was the benefit of using the encoder only by Yong, Yong Ho? Uh, I agree that it doesn't have benefit on mm -hmm. on the get achieving better performance on object detection task, but well, it but it shows more on using only VIT to perform object detection task. Yeah, maybe they want to use the pre trainer model like. The VIT or mm -hmm. DIT like that. So I think that that's really okay. So maybe last question was by Kyun. What loss mm -hmm. is used in the loss? Oh, yes. The bipartite matching loss is used as same in DT. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. And let's move to the code review. Maybe you, Kyun, you can, you can figure out the what loss. Yes. 아, 네. 코드 리뷰 진행 한국어로 해도 되겠죠? 네, 괜찮습니다. 네, 감사합니다. 어, 인터넷이 느린 것 같은데 일단은 저는 저는... 글자 크기 조금만 키워 줄래요? 어, 네. 좋은 것 같습니다. 네. 
그 튜토리얼 알파이썬이라고 이제 폴더를 새로 만 파일을 새로 만들긴 했는데 이거를 이건 이제 이발레이션이랑 비주얼라이제이션 용이고 그 트레이닝은 메인 문을 이따가 다시 돌아가서 리뷰를 하도록 하겠습니다. 그래서 이렇게 많은 것들을 인프트를 하게 되고요. 그러고 이건 이제 그냥 그 트랜스폼이 트랜스폼 하는 펑션이고 이제 여기는 전부 다 플라팅 유틸리티라고 생각을 하시면 될것 같아요. 그래서 이제 디텍션에서 데이터셋 그 코코 디텍션이라는 클래스에서 데이터셋을 받아오고 이제 각각 이미지랑 어노테이션을 받을 수 있는데요. 그래서 일단은 데이터랑 어노테이션만 찍어 보면은 이제 이런 식으로 나오는 거를 볼수 있었고요. 그리고 모델은 이제 프리트레인드 모델 같은 경우에는 그 구글에 있는 것들, 그 구글 드라이브에 올려놓은 것들을 다 받을 수 있었는데요. 일단 DEIT small 모델을 이제 불러와가지고 세컨 정의하고 그 포지셔널 앵코더 사이즈랑 미, 미들 포지셔널 앵코더 사이즈를 정의를 해준 다음에 이제 디텍터라는 클래스에다가 넣어가지고 모델을 포트를 하면은 이제 세컨은 비전 트랜스포머인 거 트랜스포머이고 이제 쭉 BIT가 쭉 있고요. 그러고 이제 가장 밑에 클래스를 예측하는 MLP랑 박스를 예측하는 MLP가 붙어 있는 걸볼수 있습니다. 그래서 이제 트레이닝 쪽으로 조금 넘어가면요. 화소가 좀 많습니다. 그래서 이제 이 빌드 YOLOS 모델이라는 곳에서 YOLOS 모델이랑, 모델이랑 그 노스 크라이테리언이랑 이 포스트 프로세서라고 해가지고 그 마지막에 나온 바운딩 박스를 이제 그 이미지 사이즈에 이제 바운딩 박스가 그 로, 로케이션이 0에서 1 사이로 나오게 되는데 이제 그거를 이미지 사이즈에 맞춰주는 포스트 프로세서라고 보시면 될것 같습니다. 그래서 이세 가지를 빌드를 하고 뭐 여기는 그냥 그 멀티 GPU 쓰기 위한 패럴럴한 부분이고요. 옵티마이저도 빌드를 해가지고 옵티마이저 스케줄러 빌드를 하고 데이터셋 이제 로드를 한 다음에 여기도 다시 그 패럴럴한 패럴럴하게 만들려고 이제 그 디스트리뷰티 샘플러를 쓰는 부분이고요. 그리고 이제 뭐 체크 포인트에서 리줌 할 거면 리줌을 하고 이발레이션 할 거면 이발레이션 하고. 이제 여기 트레인 원 에포크라는 함수에서 이제 각 에포크별로 그 학습을 하게 됩니다. 그래서 다시 올라가서 욜로 S 모델부터 보게 되면요. 여기로 가게 되는데요. 이제 네, 디텍터 <웃음> 이제 이, 이, 함, 이 디텍터라는 클래스에서 모델을 받아오게 되는데 백본은 이제 백본 이름이 타인인지 스몰인지 베이스인지 그리고 스몰 스케일링인지 이제 이세가이네 가지에 대해서 인플멘테이션이 되어 있는데요. 어 대표도 그래서 이제 백본을 한번 먼저 보면요. 이 비전 트랜스포머라고. 어, 가장 아래로 가야 될것 같은데, 이제, 스몰, 타이니 같은 경우에는 패치 사이즈 16에, 인베딩이 192에, 덱스 2, 3, 이런 식으로 이제 여기서 위에서 가장 정의를 하게 되고요. 이제, 스몰 같은 경우에는 인베딩, 인베딩 디멘전이 조금 더 크고, 헤드도 조금 더 많아지는 걸볼수 있고요. 그리고 이제, 스케일링 같은 경우에는 인베딩 디멘전 조금 줄어들고, 대신 덱스가 늘어나는 그런 모델이라고 생각하시면 될것 같습니다. 그래서 비전 트랜스포머 쪽으로 다시 넘어가면은 이제 뎁스랑 뭐 패치 사이즈랑 인풋 채널이랑 엠베딩 사이즈랑 클래스를 미리 좀 저장을 해두고요. 그리고 이제 이 패치 엠베딩을 먼저 선언을 합니다. 이거는 이제 이미지가 들어왔을 때 16x16 16 패치로 다 만들어야 하니 이제 프로젝트 이제 리니어 그 시퀀스로 만들어야 하니까 이제 2D 컨볼루션을 커널이 패치 사이즈고 스트라이드가 패치 사이즈인 2D 컨버전을 한번 통과해서 플랫한 걸 지금 쓰고 있고요. 이렇게 함으로써 이제 리니, 한번 리니어 프로젝션을 해서 그, 패, 그 이미지 패치를 만들게 됩니다. 
뭐라고? 그 정학생 그 중간에 좀 질문 네. 좀 해도 돼요? 그 그러니까 네. 지금 설명하고 있는 그 VIT 파트는 사실 그냥 원래 VIT랑 거의 똑같은 거죠? 완벽하게. 어, 네, 네, 네. 그, 그 코드로 그, 그냥 그대로 거의 구현이 되어 있는 거죠. 네, 그 여기 이제 파인 튜닝 하는 함수만 좀 달라졌는데 여기만 음, 할 거예요? 음, 어, 네, 네, 아, 네. 네. 그게 정말 간단할 것 같아서 다시 보다 보니까. 네. 아, 네, 맞습니다. 사실 그냥 아, 기존에 네. 있는 코드를 많이 썼다고 음... 생각을 하시면 될것 같아요. 그래서 그, 네, 그 네. 관련된 그냥 뭐 끝나기 전에 질문을 드려보면, 그러니까 사실 결국에는 네. 아까도 제가 계속 질문했던 거랑 친구들 질문했던 거랑 비슷한 연장선일 것 같은데, 결국에 이게 이제 DIT보다 안 좋은데, DTR보다 안 좋은 게 맞는데, 얘네들이 네. 사실 주장하는 게 결국에는 어, 그냥 기존의 비전 트랜스포머? 인코더만 있는 비전 트랜스퍼 애들을 사실 거의 가져다 쓸수 있잖아요. 바로 그러니까 프리트레인드 모델을. 근데 DTR 계열 애들은 사실 그렇게 할 수가 없잖아요. 그러니까 인코더, 디코더를 처음부터 스프레스 학습을 해야 되는데 결국에는 조금 어뭐 끝까지 학습을 다 돌리면 성능은 좀더 올라갈 수 있지만 당연히 뭐 알겠지만 DTR이 너무 오래 걸리기도 하고 그 컨버전한 데까지. 그런데 확실히 장점이 있을 것 같은데 그러면 은 혹시 그 정은 학생 생각에는 이런 프리트레인드 인코더로만 가지고 디텍션 모델을 설계를 하는데 어, DTR 같은 요즘에 좀 트랜스포머 기반 디텍터까지 요즘에 좀 오늘 내가 강의 시간 얘기하겠지만 마지막에 좀 요즘에 세그멘테이션 애들도 다 이제 DTR 기반으로 많이 가는데 마스크 클래스피케이션처럼 많이 가는데 어, 그런 애들보다 어쨌든 성능이 더잘 나올 수 있으면 사실 원래 훨씬 더 나은 패러다임일 수가 있는 거잖아요. 왜냐하면 어쨌든 이미지 클래스피케이션에 학습된 그뭐 V 아 VIT 기반 애들을 다쓸수 있으니까 바로 프리트레인드 모델로, 그렇죠? 혹시 뭐 그럼 그 관점에서 이 논문 이런 계열 논문을 롤로스 같은 논문 계열을 어떤 식으로 좀 인프로브하면 좋을지 혹시 고민해본 적이 있나요? 그러니까 이거 좀 준비하시면서. 어 하하, 사실. 뭔가 그렇게 생각을 해본 적은 없, 생각을 많이는 못 깊게는 못 해봤는데 음. 결국에는 CNN이랑 트랜스포머를 좀 같이 활용하거나 뭔가 뭔가 조금 더 그런 그 공간에 대한 정보를 아예 주입을 안 하고 있잖아요 열로스는 음. 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 근데 이제 그런 걸 조금은 줘야 그러니까 그런 걸 줌으로써 성능이 올라갈 수는 있을 것 같은데 그게 과연 약간 프랙티컬하게는 의미가 있겠지만 뭔가 논문으로 쓰기에는 좀 컨트리뷰션이 딸리지 않나 라고 생각을 해서 뭔가 많이 깊게 생각하지 않았습니다. 그, 어, 조금만 더 질문을 하면 그, 그러니까 원래 우리가 이제 배웠던 뭐 F, 어, FPA나 이런 애들은 사실 다 비슷하잖아요. 원래 프리, 그 이미지 넷 클래스피케이션에서 학습된 또는 그냥 클래스피케이션 또는 셀프 슈퍼에서 학습된 그냥 CNN 백본을 가지고 와서 뒷단에 뭔가 오브제 디텍션을 위한 추가적인 모듈들을 붙여가지고 하는 게 일반적이긴 한데 어, 사실 저 DTR 같은 경우도 어쨌든 인코더, 디코더가 있긴 하지만 그 인코더를 그냥 VIT 백본으로 바꾸면 안 된단 말이죠. 그러니까 설계가 처음부터 그렇게 안 되어 있으니까. 네, 네, 네. 그러니까 그 관점에서 뭔가 DIT의 디코더 부분을, 그러니까 그 D, 아, DTR의 인코더 부분이 뭔가 그냥 제너럴한 VIT 모델로 각, VIT 뭐 인코더로 바뀔 수 있게 뭔가 좀 바꿔볼 수 있으면 지금 욜로스나 DTR 같은 두 가지 논문들을 다 장점을 가져갈 수 있을 것 같다는 좀 생각이 좀 갑자기 들어가지고 네, 좀 질문을 아, 네. 드렸습니다. 네, 알고 네. 좀더 길어질 것 같아서 다음에 또 얘기해 보시죠. 네, 네, 저 되게 좋은 생각인 것 같습니다. 네, 네, 그래서 어디까지? 아, 네, 그래서 사실 그냥 똑같이 그 BIT를 로드를 하고 이 파인튠 디텍션이라는 부분이 조금 바뀌는데요. 여기서 하는 거는 이제 그 원래는 포지셔널 엠베딩이 그 클래시케이션 쪽으로만 되어 있어서 224 포지셔널 아마 포지셔널 엠베딩 사이즈가 224였을 것 같았었는데 얘를 이제 좀 늘려주고 이제 클래시케이션 토큰을 뗀다고 했는데 부연체는 붙여져 있어서 조금 의아를 하긴 했습니다. 그래서 이제 포지셔널 엠베딩에는 이제 클래시케이션 쪽이랑 패치 포지셔널 엠베딩 엠베딩 그리고 디텍션 포지션을 엠베딩까지 추가를 해서 인셜라이제이션을 해주는 부분입니다. 그래서 이제 보시면 디텍션 토큰을 이제 이렇게 인셜라이제이션을 먼저 해주고 원래 가지고 있던 포지션을 엠베딩의 첫 번째 인덱스는 클래스피케이션 포지션을 엠베딩이니까 걔를 일단 뗀다 빼고 
나머지 이제 그 패치의 포지셔널 엠베딩을 다 떼온 다음에 얘를 이제 인터플레이션을 그 224가 아니라 그 800으로 이제 인터플레 800이랑 800, 1344 여기로 이제 인터플레이션을 해주게 됩니다. 여기서 이제 인터플레이션을 해주고 플랫턴을 해준 다음에 이 포지셔널 엠베딩을 이제 다 콘캐트니 그 클래스 클래스피케이션 포지셔널 엠베딩 패치 포, 패치 포지셔널 엠베딩 디텍션 토큰 포지셔널 엠베딩 이제 세 개를 콘캐트를 해가지고 포지셔널 엠베딩으로 사용을 하게 됩니다. 이제 이 부분이 달라지고 이제 그그 그 디텍션 그 B R T 의 이제 마지막 블락 쪽에서 미드 포지셔널 엠베딩을 사용 이제 미드 포지션 엠베딩이라는 걸좀 사용을 하는데요. 이게 이제 타이니 모델은 아니고 스몰이랑 베이스 모델에서만 사용을 하는데 이제 이 친구도 똑같 똑같이 이제 네 선언을 해주게 됩니다. 그거 말고는 그냥 다 이제 인터플레이션 하는 쪽이 추가가 되어 있고요. 스월드를 한번 보시면 이제 백돈에서 그 리니얼 프로젝션 한번 한 다음에 이제 뭐그 미드 포지션 엠베딩 있으면 그 이게 이제 그 800,1344로 포지션을 엠베딩을 아마 처음에 지정을 했는데 이제 디텍션 데이터 셋 같은 경우에는 크기가 달라질 수 있기 때문에 그거를 위해서 포지션을 엠베딩을 인터플레이션을 한번 더 해주고요. 그래서 한번더 인터플레이션 돼가지고 이 포지션 엠베딩을 다시 구하고 이제 CLS 토큰이랑 디텍션 토큰을 이제 세개 이제 떼, 떼와가지고 이제 세 개를 다 합친 다음 합친 다음에 이제 그 아까 구한 인터플레이션 된 포지션 엠베딩을 더해서 이제 BIT에 태우게 됩니다. 그게 이제 백본에 거의 다고요. 돌아가서. 그래서 사실 디텍터는 되게 별게 없습니다. 그래서 백본을, 백본을 태워가지고 그 피처를 구한 다음에 이, 이 피처가 아, 아까 이제 빼먹은 게한 가지 있는데 이제 그 마지막 100개 디텍션 토큰에만 해당하는 그 피처만 가져오게 됩니다. 아마 제가 깜빡하고 놓친 것 같은데 네, 여기 보시면 이제 마지막 디텍션 토큰에 해당하는 애들만 피처를 가져오게 되고요. 그래서 그거에 해, 그거를 이제 그 각각 클래스 엠베딩이나 바운디 박스 엠베딩을 이제 구해주게 됩니다. 여기서 이제 보셔야 되는 게 바운디 박스 엠베딩은 무조건 0에서 1 사이로만 나와서 그 포스트 프로세서에서 이제 마지막에만 스케일링을 바꿔준다고 생각을 하시면 될것 같습니다. 그리고 노스 같은 경우에는 DTR이랑 정말 똑같고요. 사실 그 DTR에 있는 코드 자체도 거의 그대로 가져와가지고 그냥 그 레이블 노스랑 그 커지널티 노스라고 이거는 이제 그냥 쓰는 거는 아니고 이제 노넴티 그, 그 진짜 바운디 박스라고 예측을 한 예측을 한그 바운디 박스 수랑 아닌 애들이랑의 차이 차이를 그냥 로그를 찍어주기 위한 거. 그리고 이제 바운드 박스도 에러노스 쓰고 있고요. 마스크는 아예 그냥 DTR에서 얘네가 복사 붙여넣기를 해서 그런지 그냥 필요 없는 쪽이 들어가 있는 것 같습니다. 네, 매처도 DTR이랑 완전 똑같아서 사실 크게 의미는 없을 것 같고 그냥 그 아까 보신 그 모델이 달라진 거 말고는 사실 DTR이랑 크게 다른 건 없는 것 같습니다. 그래서 그냥 트레이닝도 보시면 거의 뭐 다른 그냥 일반적인 트레이닝 하는 그냥 그거고 모델에서 아웃도 넣고 로스 구하고 이제 각각의 로스 썸 해가지고 그냥 백골드 하는 그냥 그런 코드고요. 그런 식으로 이제 학습을 하면 되고 시간이 없으니까. 그리고 이제 이벨레이션은 모델이 모델 불러와서 
이제 밸리데이션 셋 올리고 그냥 이 밸리데이션이라는 함수 그냥 그 파이코코에 있는 거 그대로 이제 쓰고 있는 것 같습니다. 프레딕션도 잘 되는 거를 확인을 했고요. 이제 어텐션 비주얼라이제이션 하는 코드도 있어가지고 그 어텐션 리턴을 할수 있게 만들어놔서 이제 디텍션 토큰에 그 어텐션만 뽑아다가 이제 보면은 이런 식으로 이제 이층 여기에 있는 뭔가 바나나 같이 생긴 걸 디텍션할 때 이쪽에 헤드가 이쪽에 이제 어텐션 랩이 잘 찍히고 이 밑에 있는 큰 도시락 같은 애할 때도 좀 찍히고 이런 거를 직접 확인을 좀할수 있었어요. 네, 여기까지 해도 괜찮을까요? 네, 다 됐나요? 어, 오케이. 네, 네. 아, 좋습니다. 캐스처? 노? 오케이, 땡큐 베리 마치 오늘. 음, 오케이, so next, move to the, move to the next presentation. Corner net, detecting object as paired to key point by 준성, please start. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a question previously, but anyway. <laughs> so, hello, I'm Jin Sam. I'm going to present a paper CornerNet today. Um, the main contribution of this paper is let's use corner to detect an object. So, uh, for example, let's say that uh, we have two corners, like top left and bottom right. Um, as we can see, we can uh, get a one box. Um, the reason that we are using this one is um, the, as you know, the number of boxes is the quadratic number of pixels. However, if we use the W times F, W times H edges, we can express all of them. Um, the overall architecture is pretty simple. Uh, they use just a uh, hourglass network as a backbone and we put uh, features to the prediction modules and the prediction module is in charge of some corners, um, top left and bottom right. I'm going to explain this prediction modules uh, in this presentation. So present uh, the prediction module is composed of several layers and corner pulling. So the corner pulling is one of the other contribution of this paper. Uh, it, it will be come soon and the uh, prediction module outputs like three things, but I'm not going to explain the offsets here because it's not important to understand the main point. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the overall architecture out in the in this architecture they outputs two things, uh, three things, but I'm going to explain two. So heat map and embeddings. So heat map, uh, the shape of heat map is uh, give me a second. Uh, H by W by C, C is the number of classes. So um, the, heat, the value of heat map will be high at the location and channel if there is a corner, like top left and bottom right. Um, for example, let's say that um, there, the, there is a problem. So let's say that if we have two objects like this, and then the model predicts like as a heat map, they predict top left corner is like here and here, and then the bottom right corner is here and here. But the problem is how, how do we map these two things, right? Like it can be like this. Um, so there it's where the embedding coming from. So the in this embedding space, uh, if the corners are from same object, the inner product between the embedding vector will be high. Uh, no, sorry, low. Um, if it is not, it will be high. So, but the problem is how do we train that embedding space, right? Um, the for the uh, heat map regression is pretty straightforward. Um, for target matrix, we put one to the uh, the location of GT boxes like this, and then put like zero point nine around of it to like allow some slack and 
the important part, I, I say, like interesting part is some loss to, um, I would say, uh, train this embedding space that I mentioned previously. Um, there are two losses, pull loss and push loss. So pull loss is they're trying to um, minimize the distance between embedding vectors if they're coming from same space, um, at same uh, uh, offset, I mean. So let's say that E T T K is top left corner and then E B K is the bottom right corner. The E K is the middle of it. So in this case, as you can see, uh, they're trying to make these vectors in, uh, into this middle vector. Uh, in the push loss, they're trying to maximize the distance between mean vectors if they're coming from different objects. So uh, this EK should be different from this EJ, right? So in here, in paper, they put one here. If we like plot this loss, um, if e k, uh, e k, k and j is different, so e k, k, e k and e j is different, that means that model is happy, right? Uh, because they're coming from different objects, so it will be like here. And then if they're similar, it will be here, since it is zero. Um, so the overall loss graph is like this. Um, by doing so, we can achieve is like training uh, the embedding space, uh, train this embedding space. Um, the other uh, main contribution is corner pulling. So um, the main disadvantage of this method is like the receptive field is not big enough to get the important part of the object like here. So what they do is it's just like, what they do is they're trying to max pull this side and that side. So they get like important features from the object like here and here. So they explain how to do it, but um, yeah. And the main result, so they provided some like pretty competitive result, competitive result, even they compared to the uh, two-stage model and then it was pretty good, yeah. Thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Kasha on this paper. No, I have a one question. When I check the loss function on corner now, okay, please, uh, please ah, yeah. do your screen again. Okay. Um, uh, you mean here, yeah. right? Yeah, no, five. Okay, so yeah. I think that this kind of loss function is exactly, uh, not exactly, uh, similar to the um, um, contrastive loss function, right? Because oh, have, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah definitely. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah so is there any um, the further work, I mean, the other work to, um, to extend this kind of paper by reconsidering the loss function? Is there any paper? Oh yeah, I, I I believe that there is after this that so there is a actually there is a limitation, but I didn't mention it. So let's say that um uh, a second how can I oh is it black there right okay so. So what, what I, the limitation of this method is that let's say that there are two objects here mm -hmm. and then let's say that this embedding vector is similar to that embedding vector here. Mm -hmm. So that means that they are going to predict, the model is going to predict this big one also like this. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is the main problem is this um, push and pull loss. Right. So right. in this paper, they use only one like dimension, this E G K is even just a scalar. So if they increase the dimension of this embedding vector, they might solve it, but they didn't try even. So I feel like they wasn't able to solve this problem. So after this 
paper, the center net is coming. So according to them, they just, what they does is that to, uh, to solve this problem, they um, get back to the like, center and then regress on this one and that one, I think. Yeah. But um, I, I'm, yeah. I, I, if according to the paper, I think they solved this uh, problem in the corner net. Yeah, after this like research. Okay, yeah. so thank you very much. There was another question. Yeah, maybe I missed the what is the benefit of using encopy method and encopy method. Uh, Jung, you mean um. Two stage method versus one stage method, or uh, yeah, sure. So um, I, I was there are several benefits, right? There is also this advantage, but I, I would say the main advantage by using that is um, it is the F. If it is anchor based method, we use, we need to use uh, what is that? non-maximum suppression, something like right. that, post-process thing. But however, in this method, we don't need to do those kind of handcraft mm. like post-process. That is, I, I think, the main advantage of uh, this kind of like heat map regression and yeah. Right. Does it answer your questions? Uh, oh, there is a disadvantage too, but yeah, maybe you didn't ask. <laughs> oh, so what is the disadvantage then? Hmm? Sir? What is the disadvantage of you? Oh, the disadvantage of is, so this one is the, like kind of new era of, I would say, it's like kind of point as a point as object thing. So like we can't use the, a lot of like advanced tech, technique oh. that developed for like anchor-based method. So this one is kind of new one. So like every technology that we know for anchor-based method is not usable here. That's I think a pretty big disadvantage mm -hmm. that like hold this back, this like kind of method back. Good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you very much. Other questions? No? Okay, thank you very much again. Okay, so this is the end of the sound presentation in objective uh, fiction. So in, okay, after five minute break, we will start the segmentation part. Um, maybe sound presentation for the segmentation, maybe move to the next week. I'm not sure yet, but okay. Anyway, so let's start in five minutes.
Right, let's get started again. So uh, thank you very much for the last presentation. So today we will move to the um, advanced lack cognition task, I mean the lack cognition technique segmentation, image segmentation. Okay, this is lecture three. Let's get started. So to move to the image segmentation, I would like to recap the generalized RCN framework, RCN framework. So RCN framework was the um, was de facto standard in, in object detection part. So starting from the RCNN or the RCNN paper by uh, Los Garcia, there was the um, there was the few advanced methods from the RCNN, uh, past RCNN, past RCNN, feature pyramid network, which which also called the FPM, and mask. Ah, there was no, not mask RCN yet. Um, something like this, right? One of these kinds of technique can really, uh, can be formulated in a generalized RCN framework, right? So let's go back to the RCN framework. Okay, let's suppose that we have uh, images I like this and generalized RCN framework consisting of two parts, per image computation part and per region computation for the each region RI, RI. So first of all, from the input image, we, we, we extract the feature vector uh, in an uh, image level. For example, uh, mapping function fi. Um, in, um, in two stage case, we also need the r, r of i function, r of i function that extract the object candidate from the input images. And we also need the g function, g of fi and ri, fi is the global image vector, I mean, not global image vector, globally defined uh, picture representation, fi, and ri is the one of the object candidate. Then we compute the uh, featureized representation for each proposal. So this one. So it's going to be the very, uh, it's not very, uh, it's going to be the uh, local feature vector for each object proposal. And we also apply additional processing to the each proposal back uh, feature through the H function. H function is just like the embedding, um, feature embedding to, 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 to the classification or the regression function. Maybe um, this H function is often formulated in MLP, just MLP. And we apply the multiple head to make a task specific prediction. So in object detection task, we have a two hat, two hat. First one is the object classifier. Second is object regression. I mean the box regression model, right? This is a general RCN framework. Today we will see one of the method that reformulated, that reformulate this generalized RCN framework for the uh, instance segmentation. We will discuss later. Um, yeah. Anyway. We are here, right? So we are here. We are uh, so far we discuss object detection, but as we discussed in lecture one, there are many advanced um, tasks to understand your images or scene. Uh, this is kind of the pixel level recognition task, or which or just call image recognition. Of course, there are more advanced tasks in this uh, direction, but we, today we'll just focus this pixel level recognition task. Okay, so this is image like, uh, segmentation. This is image segmentation. Lovely, image segmentation can be categorized three kinds of technique. Semantic segmentation, and instance segmentation, and panoptic segmentation. Panoptic segmentation. Today, we will see what each task means and uh, what kind of state of art method can be formulated to solve each, uh, each task. Okay, first of all, let's start with the semantic segmentation. The objective of semantic segmentation is to assign the semantic label for each pixel. Assign semantic label for each pixel. So it, this is kind of the pixel level classification problem. Pixel. 어, 이 필기가 여러분 잘안 되는데 여러분들 제가 말로 할 테니까 여러분들 그냥 알아서 써줘요. 픽셀 레벨. 자, 
classification. This is a classification problem, right? For example, there is a sky. This pixel represents the tree. This pixel represents the river, something like this. So we want to label label each pixel in the image with the category level uh, defined at at each data set. And don't differentiate instances. Only care about the pixel. This is semantic segmentation. So early idea of the semantic segmentation was the sliding window technique, sliding window technique. Okay, only idea means um, um, in 2012 or 2013 or 2014, uh, there was the first revolution of the deep neural network. So there was the AlexNet or the VGNet, right? So to apply the AlexNet or the VGNet um, in, uh, on, on the image, uh, on the semantic segmentation, the very straightforward math method is to, is to use the sliding window like this, okay? So to classify this pixel, we can consider the uh, nearby uh, nearby pixels, which is going to the patches. Uh, we we can first extract the patches like this, or like this, like this, right? And then just use the um, just use the additional uh, CNN backbone model. In this case, AlexNet, and just classify images like this just classified patches. In this case, we can classify this pixel as a semantic label. So it's going to be the pixel level classification. The problem is it's very inefficient, not reusing shared features between the words and patches like this. Right? So this is going to be a very inefficient way. So to solve this kind of problem, we already know encoder decoder network, which is designed which is designed as a bunch of the convolution layer with downsampling layer and upsampling layer inside the network. So which kind of the encoder decoder network is called, it, it's also called the fully convolution layer, uh, fully convolution network or the FCM. Uh, there are two parts, downsampling part and upsampling part. Downsampling part try to reduce the special resolution of the input feature vector, like uh, starting from the original image, like this or this and this, to extract the, um, how to say, uh, large context information from the input images by using the pooling or the stride convolution, like this, and then to classify pixel level information, most of method formulate their own on upsampling method. Assembly method. So, first of all, most of journey attempt to increase the special resolution uh, from the uh, low level, low level picture vector. How does CNN lose the resolution? You already know that, right? Due to the sliding and max pulling. So, 여러분 앞에는 여러분들 뭐 대충 아는 내용이니까 더 빠르게 넘어갈게요. 그래서 인코더 파트에서가 이제 CNN에서 레졸루션을 이런 이유가 당연히 뭐 스트라이딩이나 맥스플링 때문에 일어나는 거죠. 하지만 필요하죠. 왜냐? 리셋트 필드를 높이기 위해서. 이게 왜 필요하냐면 Why we need to lose resolution to, to improve, uh, to increase, to increase reset field. Just r f 자자, reset field. 그렇죠? 이게 좀 오늘 책, 어, 안 되네요, 잘 빼기가. 그래서, 비즈 필드를 올리려면 어쩔 수 없었던 선택이었죠, 그쵸? 그래서, so, possible solution, possible solution, without using stride, just fix stride as one and removing fooling. But we need a large research field, then the solution is just use the larger corner, larger corner. So, for example, if one network used the color five, five by five corner with a stride pool, the result field was nine, right? But similarly, with only with a stride one, by enlarging the corner to the nine, our result field is going to be nine, right? So it's going to be exact, uh, almost exactly the same, but computationally expansive and possibly worth repeating. Why? Due to the 
increased number of the parameter right? in, in, in your network, right? So there was the, so many kinds of the upsampling or the unpooling method. So the most simplest one is the nearest neighbor. Starting from the info feature vector, we would like to generate the um, repeated values on nearby pixels, like this, this, or this, and this. Or there is going to be the another technique, which is called the bed of nail. In this technique, they just uh, they just uh, mm, set the values here um, at each sum window and just uh, fill out zero on the remaining part like this. Then just apply the uh, follow following standard module to to for, uh, to propagate this information to the nearby pixels. Um, more advanced technique was the max unpooling. Max unpooling. So if the max pooling um, applied on the encoder part, in this kind of technique, they just to remember which element was max. I mean the index. 5, 6, 7, 8, 이면 이 인덱스를 전환하고 있다가 and use a position from the pooling layer, I mean the max pooling layer to set the values here and apply addition, uh, apply following conversion layer to propagate this one, right? By using this kind of max sampling layer, maybe you can preserve the special, uh, special properties better, but it still requires the connection between the encoder and corresponding decoder. So, which is maybe the uh, redundant, right? Redundancy, right? So, yeah. Another task to enlarge your uh, convolution module was the transpose convolution. That's kind of the concept of just recap, right? You already studied this kind of concept in team learning or the machine learning uh, lectures, right? 여러분 이거 뭐 아는 내용이니까 빠르게 넘어가는 거고 혹시 이런 내용들 모르는 친구들이 있으면 꼭 복습해 주시길 바래요. 알겠죠? 어. 오케이. 그래서 오케이. 그래서 to understand the transpose convolution you have to go back to the normal convolution layer. 오케이. Okay, so when we consider the 3 by 3 convolution we tried one and pad one the output is when p looks like this. So by using the padding we can preserve the special resolution, right? But when they use the larger stride size, uh, for example, stride two, we may we may lose the special resolution as a four by four to the two by two. So in transpose convolution, for example, three by three transpose convolution with stride two, we can enlarge the size of the output feature vector. How our kernel defined in three by three space, for example, then by convolving this uh, kernel to the this value, we can define the output like this. Now it's not combo, it's just the uh, multiplication, right? Now similarly, by multiplying these values to the original kernel, we can get another window values like this. And there was some overlap. So we can just sum up with the output overlap. Then by this kind of technique, we can get the four by four feature vector from the two by two feature vector. So in transfer convolution module, we train this kind of the parameter. So this is the runnable of sampler. So this is called the transfer convolution. Anyway, so to solve the uh, semantic segmentation problem, uh, most of the conventional method used the encoder and decoder network consisting of the downstream layers and the upstream layer. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the method, the existing method try to their own, their own upsampler or the downsampler to increase the performance. So the first idea was that first idea of this um, FCN was the just FCN, fully convolution network for the semantic segmentation. 
in CBPR 2015, this paper was uh, this paper got a best paper award at the time. So idea was very very simple. So starting from the image, they just apply convolutional uh, first convolution pulling convolution pulling convolution pulling blah 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 blah, and finally. Uh, from the from the output of the convolution six or seven, they just estimate the um um let's say segmentation map segmentation map by just using the bilinear sampler bilinear sampler ah here in this case uh sorry two times of sample the prediction which is called the FCN thirty two S but if we want to preserve the detail better, we can extract the feature vector from the shallow layer and use additional uh, convolution to predict the um, uh, higher level prediction, uh, segmentation prediction, so which is called the FCN 16. And if we use the plus three output and use the additional feature vector to generate the uh, higher dimensional output, which is called the Epsilon uh, 8S. So it was a very simple idea to solve the your to solve your semantic segmentation. So, 여러분 여기 뭐 너무 쉬운 얘기라서 넘어가면 간단해요 그냥 이전에만 해도 Epsilon 처음 나왔을 때만 해도 이건 거의 그냥 알렉스넷 백분에다가 그냥 해당하는 레이어에다가 프레딕터를 붙여가지고 segmentation 맵을 만들어내는 그냥 가장 일반적인 방법이었죠. 그러다가 이제는 so after that the researcher uh, attempt to develop the better sampler. So there was the dilate convolution or the atrocious convolution, dilate convolution or atrocious convolution. In this kind of technique, they just focus on receptive field, receptive field. So. Uh, so I do like that. Okay. So if we have the three by three column, the research field is going to be the three by three, right? Without any uh, stripe or pulling layer, as, this, as we discussed so far, right? But what about this? Mm, we can enlarge this three by three column like this, as a, um, in this case, in this case, nine, right? nine, but just to fill out remaining part as a zero. zero. So it's going to be the large and sparse column, zero speed in the values. Uh, what's the benefit of this kind of uh, very simple idea? So even though still we have a three by three loanable parameter here, but our resistive field is going to be the nine. It's going to be the nine. With on, only with straight one, straight one. So in this kind of technique, we can easily enlarge this to fill without any strike or pulling layer. So we, you can preserve the special resolution better without without any pulling or the stride stride uh, technique. Uh, so by using this kind of technique, you can consider the arbitrary size reset field by just to fill out the zero here. So, 그래서 뭐예요? Dynamic convolution, Atrocious convolution, 너무너무 간단했죠? 어떤 이 남는 부분의 재료를 채움으로써 이렇게 레스 필드를 높여 수 있었던 거였고 이제 마법들이 풀링이나 스트라이드를 썼어만 해, 써야만 했었던 그런 어떤 미즈, 레스 필드를 올리기 위해 썼으면 어쩔 수 없이 썼어야 됐었던 풀링과 뭐예요? 풀링과 스트라이드를 없애버렸던 거죠. 그렇죠? 그렇죠? So, when you think of this dilate convolution in the 2D space, it looks like this. So, this is a vanilla CNN in 3x3 kernel, but if we consider the late 2, late 2 means the, in this case, uh, here, the, the number of pixels between the two visible values, visible kernel, or the visible parameter. 
And if we consider the layer three, we can see the larger window. I mean, the, we can see we can see the um, we can get a larger um, detective field with the same uh, uh, with the number of parameter fixed, right? So by using this, we can capture the largest case features on a high resolution map. Uh, so that's the main idea of the um, team map, which is the one of the most popular methods for the semantic segmentation um, at the time, right? So I was very simple. So this is the team lab, semantic image segmentation with the deep convolution network, uh, attract convolution and fully connected CRF in TPAMI 2017. Uh, I just like that. Mm. This is original image, um, conventional technique to uh, decrease the decrease the decrease the special resolution and increase the special resolution using downsampling and convolution and upsampling. The output feature output looks like this, right? Feature output looks like this. There are some kinds of hole hole. But when we consider the attract convolution, kernel seven, rate two, and stride one, the long parameter is almost the same here. But the output feature map looks better focusing on the local details and, and global context comparing to the um, conventional encoder and decoder architecture. That's the main idea of the attract convolution. So it was team map. It was team lab. So, okay, comparing to the original VG network, uh, consisting of the uh, several convolutional module and FC layer to predict the one by one feature vector. Uh, due to the this um, pulling and try, uh, the output feature map is reduced one by one. Reduced as one by one. But in team lab, we want to preserve the special resolution because this is a segmentation problem because uh, this is a pixel level classification problem, right? So in team lab, pulling, convolution plus pulling to reduce the feature map size to the one over 16 of input. Uh, one over 16 of input here, here. And then they use multi layer dialect convolution or the atrus convolution to process the remaining features, remain the features, but with pixel special resolution, with pixel special resolution. But be, because they use the dialect convolution with the uh, layer two or layer four, something like this, they can enlarge, they have the effect and enlarge the um, receptive field. The field. And then after that, with the binding interpolator as an upsampling to the input size, looks like this, because still we have to reduce the size of the input uh, size of the feature vector. And they just apply the post-processing uh, using the convolution connected convolution random field, CRL, which is the handicraft the optimizer to uh, to achieve to achieve the um edge freezer the Output, uh, actually preserve the segmentation output. If you're interested, please read this paper. We will just skip. Right. And this is the just the high level understanding of the team lab, team lab architecture. And then after that, there are so many kinds of variant of the team lab. So the success of the team lab in, in uh initiate the so many variants. The first two variant was the team lab version two. Team lab version two. It was very simple. At that time, there was the um, what, what is it, Google lab, Google lab or the inception lab that formulate multiple paths within the network. Team lab version two tried to try to catch the similar idea. I just like that. Okay. So starting from the image, they apply the feature vector, but they make several paths, I mean the multiple paths of 
dilate convulsion with a different length, different length, like this. So, okay, starting from the image, we achieve the output of the pulling five, right? Then we apply the convolution, convolution, but with different length, length six, length twelve, length uh, late uh, eighteen, and late uh, late twenty four. Then parallelly convolve this feature vector and fuse the output. Right. So by doing this, the network can consider the multiple hypotheses within the network, so which, uh, uh, which in turn uh, improve the uh, context encoding performance within the network. So uh, that was the team lab version two. So you can capture object and context at multiple scale, even though they use the same number of parameter, uh, number of kernel, a number of the window size. Uh, it was a trick. It was the similar trick in more or less than she had on Jimo. Ah, more Alex and Google Lab, but more is my country. They also proposed several multi, uh, additional tricks, multi scale input, less than augmentation, or pre, -tra pre training to improve the performance. So it was the team lab version two. Uh, Right, so this is summary of the what we have done so far. So this is the encoder decoder architecture, for example, like the UNET, UNET, and this is the team lab version one. I'm the original team lab. The main idea was the atrocious convolution to preserve the special resolution while increasing the, while enlarging the, while enlarging the receptive field. And this is team lab version two. Which consider the multi-path, uh, multi-path dilated or uh, dilated convolution to process your input image. Question so far. What is the one there? Uh, take one, professor. Then each kind of compression of traditional convolution please. and can the convolution place the convolution perfectly. Hmm, convolution fluid, this kind of compression from hmm. maybe this question is arguable. So after this type of convolution, many um other tasks, for example, uh two convolution uh for example the for example um uh, video processing, something like this. Um, some kinds of method try to use the uh, uh convolution to um to achieve uh, to extract a better context with the same CNN. But after that, other paper also compared the atrocious convolution versus, uh, versus the original convolution, but I think it's arguable because it depends on it depends on the application. Okay, so but in anyway in object uh, in image classification, many conventional method benefit from the atrocious convolution. Okay. Uh, using the same thing, same thing, same architecture, 충분히 보이는데. Uh, it's a very, very good question. Mm -hmm. I think due to performance, due to performance. Okay, so as you mentioned, we can do object detection. We, we can do object detection by segmentation, right? But comparing to the just to uh, object detector, tell us for the detecting bounding boxes, the performance was the less. So that's why the um the object detector, I I mean the I mean the object detection algorithm uh have been popular studied yet. 그래서 뭐제 생각에는 뭐 그쵸? 당연히 segmentation 완벽하게 된다면 요 이제 우리가 뒤에서 얘기한 인턴 segmentation 결국에 detection이라도 볼수 있는데 완벽하게 된다면 사실 detection 필요가 없죠. 
근데 아직 디텍션 연구가 돼야 되는 이유는 사실 파운딩 박스를 찾아야 되는 문제들이 아직은 많아요. 그렇죠? 세미테이션까지 안 가도 되는데 파운딩 박스를 찾아야 되는 문제들에서는 아직까지 오제 디텍터에 테일로드 되어 있는 모델들이 훨씬 이런 인스턴 세미테이션 방법들과 성능이 더잘 나오기 때문이겠죠. 반대로 인, 더 좋은 인스턴 세미테이션 기법들을 연구하기 위해서 그 디텍션 연구들이 계속 병행이 돼야 되기도 하고요. 그렇죠? 그렇게 이해하시면 될것 같아요. 그렇죠? 유학생 Okay, other question? No? No, sir. If an object is behind of another object, isn't it hard to get the object from the segment? Uh, to get the object from the segmentation map? Maybe yes, maybe yes. That's the one problem, right? So the occlusion. Occlusion handling is one of the uh, one of the most critical uh, problem in object detection, right? right? Okay. Purpose evaluation, perfect evaluation. So to evaluate your segmentator, the IOU intersection over the union for each category C is the one of the popular method. Maybe this is a de facto standard in the segment, semantic segmentation. Uh, very, very easy. So the output your segmentation map, I mean the output of your segmentator should be H by W by C, H by W by C. So IOU means number of pixels across the whole images that have Category C, both in GT and prediction. Number of pixels across the imi all images that have category C, both in GT and prediction, over number of pixels across the whole images that have category C, either in GT or prediction. Either GT or prediction. Right? This is just the definition of the IOU. I would like to show you the example. Okay, so this is our ground truth. Okay, uh, ground truth means like that. Okay, each pixel have each own class label. So this is a sky and this is a kite, right? Now let's suppose that our output will look like this. This is the kite and this is a sky, like this. In this case, we can measure the IOU like this. IOU of kite class. So, the kite class is not the area of intersection between the ground truth and prediction. So, the ground truth and prediction are the same. The ground truth is the same. The ground truth is And over here. So, either, either ground truth or prediction. It's going to be. 합집합 in Korean, 그렇죠? 그래서 이렇게 쉽게 잔다, 그렇죠? Uh, interestingly, IOU intersection over the union is dominated by the large blobs and is less sensitive to error with a small area. So, for example, okay, so here was the first positive here, and we want to measure the similar, uh, we want to measure the IOU in this case. Uh, the, semi, uh, the intersection between the ground truth and production was same, but uh, how to say, the either ground truth and here and here, or prediction should be looks like this, right? But the area of the, this one, it's much, much larger than the, this small area, right? So IOU is going to be about, it's going to be similar to the previous example. 그렇죠? 이 그자표랑 거의 유사하겠죠, 그렇죠? 그래서 이제 IOU는 어떤 라지, 어떤 부합의 어, 도미네이트 되는 어, 무게를 가지고 있다. 이 정도 설명하면 될것 같고요. Anyway, after, uh, after FCN, which was the first approach to formulate image seg uh, segment segmentation within an encoder and decoder network, there was the DeepNet version 1, DeepNet version 2, uh, DeepNet version 3, Deep Net version 3 plus where the panoptic net, then there was the 
um, uh, dramatically performance improvement. Improvement. Anyway, there are so many kinds of related work for the semantic segmentation. Blah, blah, blah. So if you want to interest in it, please read this paper. Uh, anyway, so this is the output of the semantic segmentation. Okay, we can classify each pixel as a one of the class label. In this case, this is the human. Uh, maybe this is a pedestrian class, and this is a rule, this is core, this is um, tree, something like this. This is a lot of examples. So, um, right, this is the image taken for the uh, autom autonomous driving car. So, we, we just cast the, this semantic segmentation. It's going to be the uh, core technique in, 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 in self driving car. So, okay. So, Another segmentation task is instant segmentation. Instant segmentation. Comparing to the semantic segmentation, instant segmentation aims to delineate, delineate each object with a bounding box. With a bounding box, like this. So this is the object detection, right? This is object detection. But instant segmentation aims to delineate each object with a mask, with a mask. So comparing to the object detector, instant segmentation, uh, find the segmentation map for each object, each object. So in this case, we can differentiate between other instances comparing to the semantic segmentation. So the instant segmentation can benefit, um, can be used in many applications that requires the segmentation map, but uh, each segmentation, each segmentation map from the object should be uh, differentiated. So applications many use this. So To solve, the, to solve the instant segmentation, there are two kinds of approaches, top-down approaches and bottom-up approaches. Top-down approaches uh, try to solve this like that. First, to detect the bounding box by similar to the, similar to the object detector. Then, then, do binary segmentation for each bounding box, each bounding box. This is a modular design. This is easy to extend. I mean, easy to extend the object detector, conventional object detector. Mascarcin is one of them. Mascarcin is one of them. We will discuss this one later. Anyway, this kind of technique is called the top down approaches. On the other hand, there were, there were bottom approaches. Bottom approaches, they make Pixel level prediction that can be used to the graph pixels into the instances. Um, I just simple. First of all, they make a pixel level prediction and they graph the pixel into the instances. For example, um, what do you mean? Okay, I'd like to show you this one later. Uh, but like this, they first of all they apply Pixel level prediction, for example, segmentation map or the depth class or the instant direction or so on. And by using this information, they just drop the pixel into the instances. I mean, the independent instances like this or like this. This is also very straightforward, but top down approaches has been well known that each it's better than the bottom up approaches. Um, many new up methods that cannot be easily assigned to the one or another classes. So that's why there are many uh, variants of this top down or the bottom up conventional method. We'll discuss them later. Uh, how to measure? How to measure the instance image performance? We often use. Average precision, average precision. Um, okay, so instant segmentation, maybe you can find the kite and mask like this. 
and confidence score. I mean the uh, uh, I mean the object probability, object probability. Uh, first of all, to measure the average precision, average precision. First of all, we measure the IOU, IOU. Then check it's above the threshold or not. It's above the threshold or not. In this case, we can say that this is a true positive, true positive. And but if this is the less than the predefined threshold, uh, it may be first positive or first negative, first positive and first negative. Um, in this case, in this case, we can achieve and we can measure AP, AP for uh, single class and single IOU. So we can we, we can check the liquor and precision graph by considering the total positive, uh, first positive and first negative, first negative. So, so 이런 식으로 된다. 한국말로 더 설명하면은 IOU가 0.75보다 넣으면 그냥 무조건 트루 파지티브로 볼수 있는데 셀솔드보다 적으면 셀솔드보다 적으면 뭐예요? 그 클래스가 아닌데 그냥 클래스가 아닌데 아 다시요 클래스가 그러니까 이 카이트 클래스가 아닌 경우가 있고 카이트 클래스가 아, 다시 다시 헷갈리네 카이트 클래스가 아닌데 맞다고 한 경우, 근데 맞는데 아니다고 한 경우, 맞죠? 그두 가지 중에 하나겠죠? 맞나? 그리고 제가 이거는 쉬운 시간에 다시 한번 체크해 달려줄게요. 헷갈리네. 네. So this is average pressure. I will let you know in detail soon. 제가 다시 한번 알려줄게요. Uh, anyway, um, in instant segmentation, there were, uh, there were uh, dramatical, dramatical, dramatic improvement compared to the uh, similar to the other uh, computer vision field. So the core algorithm was the Moscow CNN, Moscow CNN, uh, based on based on general generalized RCN frame. So idea was simple. We already discussed the generalized RCN framework. Then by add more ham, you can extend general RCN framework to the other task, for example, instance segmentation and human pose estimation or the monocular 3D uh, reconstruction. So each method was called the mask RCN, dance pose, or mask RCN. So today we just see mask RCN for the instant segmentation. So how mask RCNN is formulated? How mask RCNN is formulated? Mm, okay, so mask RCNN um, often used FPN as a feature backbone, feature backbone because the, they want to they want to classify pixel level prediction, right? So they they require the higher level feature vector. So that's why they use the FPM module. And they also use the RPM similar to the object detector, object detector, but they use additional head, additional head for the mask prediction. In other words, an additional head is added to predict the instance level segmentation mask comparing to the object detector that only use the soft, uh, soft classification and box regression, box regression where the, where the, where the object classifier and the regression. So, 그래서 뭐예요? 그냥 기존 오디 디텍터들과 다르게 이렇게 마스크 헤드랑 더 붙여서 세그멘테이션 풀어주는 게 이제 마스크 RCN의 기법이다. 라는 거예요. 뭐, 사실 정말 straightforward한 extension이었고, how to classify pixel level prediction? They just use FCN, similar to the semantic segmentator. Similar. Oh, similar. Similar to. 
similar to semantic segmentation 이에요. 잘안 써지네. similar to the semantic segmentation. 그렇죠? 앞서야. And one more thing was ROI alignment, ROI alignment, which uh, replace ROI pool, ROI pool, ROI pooling, or the ROI pool in uh, object detector. Object detector. What is ROI online online operation? What are, what 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 is ROI online operation? Okay, so each uh, each vertex in this figure, each vertex means feature vector. Each vertex means feature vector. And let's suppose that we already have the ROI from the RPM module. RPM module. Similar to the detector, we we want to transform arbitrary size proposal into the fixed dimensional uh, representation. In this case, a two by two, two by two, two by two, right? Two by two. Then ROI in ROI alignment, they use they use the bilinear interpolation of the point. For example, if you want to extract the value, I mean the if you want to find out value from here, value on here, we can just use the nearby pixel by and just to bilinearly interpolate of this pixel, interpolate this pixel to achieve this value, to achieve this value. And each sub window output is just the average, average value, averaging values of the interpolated values. Interpolated value. So this is average, this value is average of the, these four kinds of values. Right? And just apply the following the MLP or the FCN. MLP or FCN. This is the ROI alignment. What is different between ROI pool and ROI, ROI pool with ROI work? If you remember the, our previous lecture, uh, original online ROI, for example, looks like this. But to apply ROI pooling, we need a snip, snip the ROI, pool, ROI region, looks like this. So this kind of technique was called the uh, quantization, right? So this kind of quantization break the pixel to pixel alignment between the input and output, break the pixel to pixel alignment between input and output, so which may hinder the performance gain in, in case of the image segmentation, in this case, instant segmentation, right? So, 뭐 정말 간단한 예였어요. 그래서 ROI 풀링으로 하면 어쨌든 우리가 이 풀링 사이, 풀링을 위해서 어떤 사이즈, 이 윈도우 자체를 이렇게 쉬프팅, 스닙했다고 했는데 쉬프팅 시켜야 됐기 때문에 발생한 어떤 그 퀀타이제이션 에러들을 그러니까 완벽하게 인식 ROI 온라인 되어 있지 않아서 퀀타이징 에러가 있었던 것들이 디텍션이야 뭐 적당히 맞추면 되니까 괜찮았는데 이 세그멘테이션은 정말 픽셀 단위 픽셀 맞춰야 되기 때문에 이러한 퀀타이징 에러를 또한 줄이는 게 중요했다. 어떻게 줄이냐? 이렇게 바일리니어 샘플링을 통해서 minimize the minimize 퀀타이징 에러. 이런 미안해 이것도 잘 써지는데 미니 My quantization error. Quant. <웃음> 미안해, 이거. Minimize. Quant. Quantization error. 어, 써줘, 여러분. 됐죠? Minim to minimize quantization error. That's, a, that's the ROI play. ROI alignment, right? And, and, right. This is the over architecture of the mascot, uh, mascot CNN. So, the one, because the ROI alignment does not have any runner parameter, so only additional runner parameter are here, FCM module. So in Mascar CNN training, we need to additionally train the, this FCM module or, 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 or mask head. Uh, right. At, at, at inference, at inference, Perform the past RCN inference and generate the uh, generate the object proposal and score the proposal and request the proposal to refine the detection boxes and apply the non-maximum suppression or the take a top K 
because it's going to be extremely challenging to feed forward every possible object candidate through this F FCM segmentator, right? So they just select uh, one of the uh, top 100 object candidate and run ROI online and mask it on top key refine and post NNS boxes. So it's going to be fast and improve the accuracy comparing to the uh, one, one shot method. One shot method. Okay, so anyway, this is the uh, result of the mask RCN or, uh, or, or the mask prediction. So this is the 28 by 20, 28 by 28 soft prediction from the mask RCN. Mask RCN. And, and this is a segmentation map. We, we may estimate continuous value from 0 to 1. And by using the threshold at 0 0.5, we can finally achieve this sharp segmentation map here. The quality was, was awesome, right? Uh, even for the larger uh, larger uh, object, looks like this. Even though our arbitrary size of the candidate is very, uh, Ill, uh, rectangle, right? But our output was uh, 28 by 20, right? 28 by 28, and we can just resize the soft prediction and threshold to generate the final output like this, right? Another example so here, even though this object is very, very small, right? Still, mask are seen and predict the uh, high quality segmentation map, looks like this. So, uh, this is examples of the instant segmentation, right? Not only they predict the pixel segmentation, but also they discriminate um, different instances, for example, different person and different wine glasses. Like this. Uh, this is another example of the instant segmentation. Instant segmentation. So, this is by mask or So, this is how it is. It's not easy. It's just a straightforward extension of the general RCN for, for the instant segmentation task. So, question. Question. 조금 많은 내용들을 하고 있는 것 같은데. 어, 네. 우리 질문이 없으면, 오케이. Okay. So, what time? Okay, so no question, right? So let's take um, 10 minute break and let's start in 10 minutes. We 10분만 쉬었다가 이제 나머지 segmented part들을 좀 보도록 합시다.
그, 잠깐만 내 질문 요거 저도 갑자기 헷갈리는데 아직 뭐 쉬는 시간이니까 그 누가 누가 잘하려나 이거 디텍션 지금 연구하는 친구들 제 설립 맞나 지금 AP가 컴피던스를 컴피던스로 스레솔딩 그러니까 IO를 계산하고 그냥 트루 파이트 퍼스트 파이트 퍼스트 네가티브 해가지고 IOU 찾는데 그게 이제 그 스레솔드 고정이고 컴피던스 바꿔가면서 재는 게 맞죠? 헷갈리네 혹시 누가 정확히 알, 알까요? 디텍션 연구하는 친구 정은 학생 정은 학생이 디텍션 좋아하지 않나요? 아닌가? 누가 할까? 일단 유진 학생 답변부터 가면 그런 트루스는 사람이 열심히 안 되죠? 사람이 열심히 손으로 따겠죠? 어, 언셔널 러닝도 있고요. 뭐 오늘은 다르지 않겠지만 사실 어, 음, 어떤 논문을 설명해 줄까? 아, 사실 그런 논문들 있죠. 그러니까 위크 슈퍼바이즈드로 그냥 이미지에 이미지만 주고 이미지에 픽셀 레벨 어테이션 주는 게 아니라 이미지에 그 클래스 레이블 하나를 주고. 그죠 여기 뭐 사람이 있다라는 그 클래스 하나만 주고 세그멘테이션을 하기도 하죠. 뭐 위클리 슈퍼와이즈라고 할수 있을 것 같은데. 네. 근데 아직까지는 세그멘테이션 분야는 그냥 슈퍼와이즈 러닝이 도미넌트한 것 같아요. 왜냐면 너무 성능 차이가 많이 나니까 다른 분야들에 비해서 슈퍼와이즈와 어떤 다른 위클리나 또 언슈퍼와이즈 방법들보다 차이가 너무 심해서 어, 세그멘테이션은 좀 분야는 아직까지 슈퍼바이트 방법이 도미넌트한 것 같고 오히려 리서치 방향이 이런 거죠. 그러니까 백본 네트워크를 열심히 다른 네트워크들로 그러니까 다른 테스크 뭐 셀프 슈퍼 러닝이나 어, 이미, 이미지 클래스 학습시켜 놓고 적은 수의 슈퍼비전을 가지고 파인 튜닝 하는 게 조금 더 방향성에서 맞는 것 같아요. 물론 아까 말했던 것처럼 어슈바이 러닝이 있다면 좋겠지만 음, 맞는 것 같습니다. 그리고 또 지금 잠깐 아직 다안 돌아온 것 같은데 혹시 돌아온 친구들 있으면은 그 우리 여러분 지금 우리가 두 번째 강 가고 있는데 어 아마 오늘 발표한 친구들은 다음 주로 좀 밀릴 것 같긴 한데 그 여러분 속도가 어때요? 우리 제 강의나 학생들 강의가 학생들 코드 리뷰 또는 논문 발표 혹시 여러분들이 느끼기에 어떤 속도라든지 이런 거 어때요? 그, 그래요? 고맙네. <웃음> 그, 네, 다른 친구들 어때요? 그러니까 조금 조절을 해야 되나 싶긴 하네. 그러니까 이게, 어, 저번 학기는 주제 하나에 제 강의 한 번, 학생들 세미나 한 번을 했었는데, 한 주씩? 근데 이번 학기는 조금 제가 욕심을 부린 게 아닌가라는 좀 생각도 들기도 하고, 그렇습니다. 이 속도로 해도 괜찮죠? 네. 혹시 뭐 의견 있으면 조금 더 남겨주시고요. 네. 그래요? 네. 알겠습니다. 그, 그래서 제가 지금 이제 오늘 강의를 준비하다 보니까 사실 할 얘기가 너무너무 많은 거예요. 이게 보면 뒤에 가면 이제는 강의자를 봤는지 모르겠지만 사실 현대 모던한 세그멘테이션 분야는 모던 세그멘테이션 분야는 사실 세만틱 인스타스 파운틱도 나누지 않아요. 그렇죠? DTR을 기점으로 이제는 거의 유니버셜한 솔루션으로 가고 있죠. 그래서 유니버셜한 그그 그 뭐예요? 트랜스포 인코더 디코더를 사용해 가지고 세그멘테이션 인스타 세그멘테이션 파운틱 세그멘테이션 한 번에 이제 풀어내는 사실 모듈로 가고 있어요. 사실 어 거기까지 알아야 우리가 이제 세그멘테이션을 이제 안다고 할수 있는 건데 그 FCM부터 거기까지 가는 간극이 너무 너무 커요. 너무 너무 커서 참 저도 이제 강의를 하는 입장으로 어, 얼마큼을 건너뛰고 얼마큼을 가야 되는지가 아직 잘 모르겠어요. 특히 컴퓨터 비전 분야라고 하는 게 너무 너무 빠르니까 그런 좀 고충이 있습니다. 소진 학생 코드 리뷰 그쵸? 근데 사실 코드 리뷰가 저도 맞아 맞는데 이게 25분은 그러니까 결국에 
어, 발표 5분에 코드리뷰는 20분이거든요. 사실 엄밀히 얘기하면 논문이 5분이니까 어, 사실 정말 짧긴 해요. 20분 만에 코드를 설명을 한다고 라 하는 게 어, 너무 사실 짧은 면이 없지 않아 있어요. 그러니까 우리가 정말로 그 코드를 완벽하게 이해하고 왔다고 하는 가정하에는 더 빠르게 할수 있지만 음, 많은 여러분들이 대부분은 아마 보고 오지 않았을 것 같기 때문에 20분 정도는 충분히 갖는 거긴 한데 제가 한번 생각해 볼게요. 어느 정도 빠를지? 준서 학생, 수업 전에 많은 놈이 있어서 하하하 아, 저도 그렇습니다. 근데 어쩔 수가 없어요. 여러분들이 참 이게 그런 것 같아. 비전을 공부한다고 하는 게뭐 AI 쪽이 다 그렇죠. 뭐 이게 수업이 문제가 아니고 여러분들이 뭔가 어떤 분야를 하려고 해도 어 그런 것 같아요. 제가 예전에 공부할 때만 해도 그냥 세그멘테이션 하면 한 두세 개 읽어도 큰 무리 없었던 것들이 이제는 뭐 진짜 사실 오늘 언급한 논문들은 사실 정말 기본, 기본이고 기본 엄청나게 많죠. 그렇죠? 그러니까 그런 게 개인적으로 조금 아쉽긴 한것 같아요. 준성 학생. 참 이게 그러네. 파이팅입니다. 그 시간을 많이 써야 돼요. 사실. 그 시간을 많이 써야 얻어가는 게 있을 것 같다는 라 생각이 좀 들긴 하네요. 했죠? 그래도 그런 건 있어요. 그래도 개인적인 생각은 그런 건 있는 것 같아요. 이 비전이나 이 어떤 AI 쪽이 사실 뜨면서 논문이 너무너무 많아지긴 했지만 또 좋은 방향성은 뭐냐면 얘네들이 사실 결이 거의 비슷하게 가요. 그렇죠? 예전처럼 타스크 스페스픽 또는 어떤 알고리즘 스페스픽한 모델들이 나오는 게 아니라 또는 로스 펑션 이런 것들이 점점 더 어떤 유니파이드 된또 유니버셜한 솔루션으로 가잖아요. 그 말은 뭐냐? 준서 학생 이 이제는 1주차, 2주차 때는 조금 처음 보고 버거워하는 개념들이 이제 우리가 토픽들은 계속 바뀌겠지만 그런 어떤 공유한 어떤 쉘드 날리지들은 사실 많이 비슷한 것들이 나올 거예요. 이제 지금 바로 이제 시작할 스윙 트랜스포머라는 개념도 사실 오늘 처음 나오지만 앞으로 계속 나올 거예요. 토픽들에서. 그래서 조금 그런 면에 있어서는 점점 더좀 쉬워지지 않을까 라는 생각은 좀 들긴 합니다. 됐죠? 해봅시다. 그러니까 결국에 경지에 도달하니까 내공이 쌓인다고 표현하는 게 맞는 것 같긴 한데 한번 다시 한번 내공을 쌓아 봅시다. 네. So you was the output of the um you s of the the mask R C N N, right? So using mask R C N N was a de facto standard last year. Last year. So, um, the beauty of the generalized RCNN framework, for example, mask RCNN, is that you can use any kind of big, any kind of good feature representation, big, uh, backbone representation, right? So, last year, there was a swing transformer, right? You already know that. Uh, swing transformer is the height. Oh, you Hierarchical vision transformer comparing to the original VIT using the shifted window manner, uh, shifted, shifted window technique. If I briefly summarize this main idea, uh, they just compute the local cell potential within the local window, but by shift the, this window and stacking this kind of module, they can. Achieve semi global self uh, self potential um, self potential uh, how to say um, self potential semi global self potential just self potential right so, yeah. uh, semi global self potential with locally defined self potential with the shifted window concept right so this paper got a best paper all the United States last year right. So after that, so many kinds of image or computer vision technique try to use the, this kind of the swing transformer as a, as a alternative backbone compare alternate alternative backbone. For example, um, last net or something like this, right? So one of the most to stay on, one of the state of art in the instant segmentation was the this technique. So this paper swing transform version two. 
they show that by use this swing transformer as a picture extractor, I'm the image level picture extractor, and and just to try just train just train the uh, mass correlation and baseline. They drastically improve the performance performance comparing to the um, previous image segment data. Anyway, so insert segmentation take last ten years. Ten years. Segment semantic segmentation and instant segmentation. If we think of semantic segmentation, uh, FCM FCM was published in CBPR two thousand. Oh, uh, well, 15, 15, It takes it takes about ten years from semantic segmentation instant segment to instant segmentation. What do instant segmentation see? What do instant segmentation see? So the reason we have to study the segmentation is to understand your scene, understand your scene, right? So as you can see here, this is the output of instant segmentation. For example, mask or CNN, mask or CNN. There is the purse, one other person here, ski, another person here, right? From this output only, there's no way to understand general scene layout. We, we can limitedly understand what happens in this scene. So, but when we combine with semantic segmentation map, for example, this is sky, this is a tree, this is snow, we can say that, okay, this person uh, is doing ski jump, maybe ski jumping, maybe, right? So in here, in 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 just instant segmentation map, we can't find out any uh, general scene layout information. But with semantic segmentation, semantic segmentation, we can do better. I mean that we can do, we can we can do better understanding of this original scene. Looks like this. So by overlapping the original image. Another limitation of using only semantic segmentation map is that we can be unable to reason about separate object. So this is the one of the semantic segmentation map output. But as you can see here, though this blob of the people want to close the loop, we don't know. Why? Because we don't know how many people are here and which shape should be these people, right? We don't know. Maybe if we can differentiate each person as done by as done in instant segmentation, we can do better. We can do better. Like this, like this. These people, there are four, five kinds of people, and they just working on working on the law, uh, working on the side work, right? That's why. So many researchers try to develop. Unified segmentation task. Unified segmentation task. Segmentation task. Single task. They want to develop single task that combine semantic segmentation and instant segmentation. For example, like this. So this is the sky. This is a tree. This is a board. But this is a different board. And different people so like this. And we also know the class here and river here, right? This kind, this kind of rich information achieve the better understanding of the scene, better understanding of the scene. So to define this one, we have to consider the things and stuff. Things and stuff. Things means categories with instance level rotation, for example person fought in instant in, in in segmentation, and stuff means categories without notion of instance, for example, sky, road, for example, background. So this is stuff. By simultaneously considering the distinct sense stuff, we can do panoptic segmentation. Panoptic segmentation. In other words, 
Participation aims to assign semantic label to pixels and segment each instance separately. separately. So this is the panoptic segmentation. Um, people keep moving. How to evaluate your panoptic quality, panoptic segmentation quality? Uh, for example, ground to panoptic segmentation map, it looks like this. Here is a class, here is a person, 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 three different person. And our predictor ones looks like this. Similar to the AP, similar to AP in instant segmentation, um, they first measure the IOU, measure the IOU by, by considering the confidence of the segmentation and and with a pixel stress rate, in this case 0.5, and then measure the true positive and first negative and first positive. So true positive, true, true, true positive, uh, it's going to be this one and this one, and this one, and true positive, another true positive is this segmentation and this segmentation. And first negative should be here, so we we the the network must detect this person, but they missed, right? So this is first negative and first positive here. Network predict this is person, but it's not a person. It's not a person, right? Then calculate PQ PQ uh, as a IOU IOU between uh, two uh, two segment in true positive, in this case here and here. So IOU over here and IOU over here over uh, number of the TP plus one over two FP plus one over two FN. So this is called the panoptic quality, panoptic quality, the measure metric for the panoptic segmentation. How to solve this problem? How to solve, how to solve this problem? Uh, one of the simplest methods to solve this problem is non-unified approaches for the unified task. In other words, use two kinds of different network for the semantic segmentation and instant segmentation, and just combine, just combine as a panoptic segmentation. It's very, very simple. But it's very it's very straightforward, but and it's going to be really easy to implement because we already have a good semantic segmentator and we already have a good instant segmentation. And by just fusing these out two output, we can do healthy segmentation. So conventional healthy segmentation try to surprisingly simple this kind of simple non unified approach for this healthy segmentation unified uh, task. For example, party FPN, UPS, UNNet, WayNet, Simnis, and more, many more. Uh, of course, there was another technique, which is called the bottom up approach for the task. Bottom up approach for the task. Uh, starting from the image, starting from the image, uh, they first upload, apply the autos convolution. Similar, similar to the team lab, team lab, and extract the semantic segmentation map first, right? And then they extract the picture vector, I mean the pixel of the picture vector, for example, um, center prediction and center regression, which is a pixel, and wrapping these pixels as an instance, similar to the, similar to the Bottom up approach for the instant segmentation, then just fuse to the quality segmentation map. This surprisingly simple method was the panoptic team lab or the deeper lab pixel consensus scoring or something like this. But from two years ago, I mean, the last year, we Phase transformer, right? So one of the most one of the uh, most impact work 
in object detector to detection field was the DTR, DTR, as we discussed last week, DTR, and this week, 그렇죠? DTR하고 나왔죠. 그러면서 이제 패러다임이 많이 바뀌었죠. 어, 어떻게 바뀌었냐? Okay, let's look at DTR. The DTR used the CNN backbone model and the position, in back, position encoding, 그렇죠? And they used the transform encoder and transform decoder, and they define learnable object queries and decode each object query independently and with additional FP, FFN, I mean the, with additional uh, M, 뭐예요? 그, 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 MLP, MLP to classify this object with box regression. Box regression. So, so it was a DTR, DTR. And DTR method, they also show that this kind of simple and, 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 and unified framework can be used to solve the panoptic segmentation problem as well. Optic segmentation problem as well. The idea was very simple. Rather than considering the object query, but also we can think and stop queries. Right? Things was the object, stuff was the background, right? Things and stuff full as a queries and decode, decode each picture vector with additional segmentator similar to the as done in the mask or CNN, then we can do panoptic segmentation, panoptic segmentation. Idea is very simple, like this. So this is the DTR, DTR. Similar to the DTR, we achieve the feature vector, feature vector, not only for the things, but also for stuff, things, and stuff. This is the vector. Then just decode. This box in bearing has a mask information. Mask information. How can you do that? How can you do that? Okay. So in this case, M means the possible object or stuff or the things as stuff, number of number, the number of things as stuff. And T means the uh, dimensionality, dimensionality of the vector. And to achieve mask information, they additionally use the uh, encoded image, I mean the encoded feature vector here, this one, because they preserve the special information. They just use this one, this feature vector, and compute multi out cell potential. Uh, it's not a cell potential, it's just the cross attention. So, multi add attention to generate attention map. In this case, n by m by h over 13, 13 to w over 13 to m is number of, number of half. Number, number of half, right? And then, similar to the mass coordinate, they decode this attention map, which is, which is, which is, for example, um, feature map, right? Then decode with the additional CNN module, similar uh, designed in the FPN-like style. Then estimate the mask version, mask version. Size of N by H over four by W over four, W over four. Then by just using the pixel of org math, we can achieve this one. Comparing to the original segmentation map, like, or for example, instant segmentation map or segmentation, semantic segmentation map. From now on, we can achieve pixel level segmentation mask and each predicted mask have the, uh, can be differentiated among different objects. So, because N, this N is and consider the whole possible things and stuff. So we can decode independently things and stuff. And things means we 
within the N, N candidate, there may be different kinds of cow or different kinds of person. 그래서 어, 좀 한국말 여기 좀 중요하게 설명을 한번더 해주면 DTR이 나오면서 많은 것들이 바뀌었어요. 그렇죠? DTR이 나오면서 인코더와 이제 디코더 구조에 이제 things and stuff를 넣어주면 그냥 이 디코딩을 오브젝트를 디코딩하는 게 아니라 things and stuff. 그러니까 things는 원래, 원래처럼 오브젝트, stuff는 어떤 백그라운드를 어떤 우리가 러너블한 쿼리로 놓고 디코딩 해버리는 거죠. 그래서 이 피처 벡터 나왔을 때 마스크 알시엔처럼 그냥 세그멘테이션 브랜치를 따로 붙여서 이렇게 세그멘테이션 해버리면 파업티 세그멘테이션이 되겠죠. 근데 뭐가 다르냐? 마스크 알시엔은 어쨌든 오브젝트 디텍션을 해서 거기에 붙이는 거기 때문에 인스턴 세그멘테이션 밖에 안 되는데 우리의 요 프레임워크에서는 디텍션을 따로 하지 않았기 때문에 백그라운드, 포그라운드를 다 찾을 수가 있어요. 그러면서도 라지 n 계 안에 그 같은 인스턴스, 가 그러니까 인스턴스가 다른 애들이 다 서로서로 서로 분리가 될수 있기 때문에 어떤 디퍼런시에이트, 인스턴스가 디퍼런시에이트까지 되니까 결국 이게 파운드 익스페멘트션 맵이 되는 거고 어 그냥 CN을 붙이는 게 아니라 뭐이 박스 인베딩에다가 바로 CN을 붙였을 수도 있겠지만 이렇게 인코디드 이미지, 즉, 요, 인코더. 결국 사실 인코더 아프시죠? 그러니까, CNN, 그러니까, 이미지의 스페셜 정보를 담고 있는 인코딩 된 피처 벡터를, 에다가, 이 박스 인베딩과의 마스크드, 아, 멀티드 어텐션. 결국에, 어, 코러스 어텐션을 하는 건데, 결국에 이걸 M, M계의 헤드로 함으로써 조금 더 많은 피처 정보를 남겨놓겠다라고 하는 거고요. 그냥 단순히. 그 다음에 그냥 CNN 돌려서, 그냥 마스크를 찾아내면 n 개의 마스크를 찾는 거죠. m 마스크 클래스피케이션 프로그램이 되는 거죠. 그렇죠? 그다음에 이제 우리가 그냥 픽셀 와이즈로 아그맥스를 하면 이제 오리오거나보다 파워틱 세그멘테이션 맵이 나오는 거고. 물론 뭐 디테일들은 어쨌든 조금 더 스페셜을 잘 살리고 싶으니 뭐 이렇게 어떤 쿼리 피처들을 어떤 인베딩 시켜가지고 조금 더 쿼리 피처에 어, 어웨어한 세그멘테이션을 할수 있도록 노력은 했지만 핵심은 이거였죠. 그래서 이제 이러한 프레임워크가 앞으로 이제 이 세그멘테이션 분야에서 자리를 잡기 시작했죠. 이 페이퍼를 기점으로. 퀘션. This is out of the uh, power optic segmentation by DTR. DTR. So the the quality of the segmentation map was impressive, right? So this is a power optic segmentation with a different graph and For often microwave like this. So this is the uh, optic segmentation lizard. Question. Hard to answer. Hard to answer. Hard to answer. 네, 나연 학생 맞습니다. 원래 화학 세븐테이션은 개념은 세븐티 세븐틴과 임서 세븐티 합친 걸로 했는데 합는 게 맞고 예전에 그 세븐티 세븐테이션과 임서 세븐테이션 다른 브랜치로 풀어서 퓨전하는 게 일반적이었는데 이제 이 DTR이라는 논문을 기점으로 이렇게 디코딩만 잘해도 어떤 원샷으로 한 번에 풀수 있다라는 게 이제는 어 이제 어떤 뭐야 이쪽 모던 세븐테이션의 방향으로 가고 있다라는 얘기를 하고 싶었어요. 이 장에서. 아들 캐시아 넙아 오케이 오케이 because the limited time i i think we we have to finish today now uh the remaining topic is improved version of the this Unified panoptic segmentation with a transformer. So there was the uh, mask former and and KNAT and panoptic seg former and mask two former like this. Then we we'll finish the segmentation part, and then we will see papers. So many papers. Maybe six paper, right? 
Six paper, right, okay. Six paper with code leaving. Next three, okay. Question? No? Okay. Okay, that's it. So this is the end of today's lecture. Next week, we will continue segmentation, segmentation topic and move to the 3D computer vision, okay? Thank you very much today and see you next week. 여러분들, 오늘도 고생 많으셨습니다.